What's up guys and welcome back to the Keep It Techie channel. I'm Josh and today we're going to talk about something that's got a lot of folks on edge. Our social security numbers are being exposed in a massive data breach. I know this might sound like another headline, but trust me, this one's worth paying attention to. Data breaches can have long-term consequences that follow you around for years. And when it involves something as critical as your social security number, that's a whole different level of serious. But don't stress, I got your back. Today, we're gonna break down what happened, what it means for you, and most importantly, what steps you can take to protect yourself moving forward. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid plan to keep your data safe. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. Keep It Techie is all about helping people learn Linux and get into the tech field. And I always try to keep things informative yet laid back. So let's dive into it. Your social security number, my social security number, all of our social security numbers potentially hacked. Is this legit that every American's social security number may, may be out there? Yeah, it's it's very possible. All right, so here's the deal. A hacker group recently leaked almost 2.7 billion records containing personal information from people in the US. Now, just think about that for a second. 2.7 billion records. I mean, we're talking names, social security numbers, all known physical addresses, and even possible aliases. And this data reportedly comes from a company called National Public Data. They're basically a company that scrapes public information and compiles it into profiles. Then they sell this data for background checks, criminal records, and things like that. Now, what's wild is that the data wasn't even encrypted. So when the hackers got their hands on it, they didn't have to break any codes. It was just there, plain as day. This kind of thing shows us just how valuable our data really is. And to make matters worse, this data wasn't just stolen and kept under wraps. The hackers initially tried to sell it for 3.5 million, but now it's out there on the dark web for free. And that means anyone with a bit of know-how can get their hands on it, which is a scary thought. Now let's break down exactly what this data includes. We're talking multiple records for a lot of people. Basically one record for each address you've ever lived at. So if you moved around a lot, like many of us have, that's a lot of information floating out there. Even though some of this data might be outdated, don't sleep on it. It can still be used in all sorts of harmful ways. I mean, identity theft, fraud, phishing, you name it. And while some records might be inaccurate, this doesn't make it any less dangerous. And this breach also has implications beyond just individuals. We're seeing multiple class action lawsuits being filed against national public data. The company is getting hit hard because they didn't do enough to protect this data. And honestly, it's about time companies start facing real consequences for these kinds of lapses. But as always, it's the people, regular folks like you and me, who have to deal with the fallout. And that's why it's so important to know how to protect yourself. All right, so let's get into the most important part. What can you do to protect yourself? You've got to monitor your credit like a hawk. I can't stress this enough. You're entitled to a free credit report from each of the three major credit bureaus, Equifax, Xperia, and TransUnion every year. But given the situation, I recommend checking them more frequently if you can. Look for anything out of the ordinary. Accounts you didn't open, inquiries you didn't authorize, stuff like that. And if you spot anything suspicious, report it immediately. And you can also set up fraud alerts on your credit report, which is a free service that makes it harder for identity thieves to open accounts in your name. Another step you could take is freezing your credit. Now, this is a bit more drastic, but it's also one of the most effective ways to protect yourself. When you freeze your credit, no one, including you, can open new accounts in your name until you unfreeze it. Now, it's free to do and you can freeze and unfreeze your credit as needed. Just keep in mind that you'll need to do this with each of the three credit bureaus separately. Now, let's talk about online security. If you haven't already, start using two-factor authentication on all your accounts. And don't just go with the SMS-based two-factor authentication 
because that can be intercepted. Instead, use an authenticator app like Google Authenticator or Authy. These apps generate codes that change every 30 seconds making it much harder for hackers to get into your account. Also, if you're still reusing passwords across different accounts, now is the time to stop. Please, please stop doing this. Get yourself a password manager, something like LastPass, 1Password, or Bitwarden, or KeePass XC. These tools help you create and store unique, strong passwords for every account you have. That way, if one account gets compromised, it doesn't lead to the domino effect where all your accounts get hacked. And while we're on the topic of security, make sure your most sensitive accounts like your email, bank, and social media have really strong, unique passwords, change them regularly, and consider adding security questions that aren't easily guessable. Now, another layer of protection is signing up for identity theft protection services. Now, I know some of you are hesitant because of the cost, but in a situation like this, it could be worth it. And these services monitor your personal information and alert you if they detect any suspicious activity. Some even offer assistance in recovering your identity if it's stolen. Companies like LifeLock and Experian offer these services. So take a look and see if one fits your needs. And don't forget to be extra vigilant against phishing attempts. I know that's one thing I cover on my channel. Every now and then, I'll just show you guys a phishing email that I receive and how AI is kind of making these phishing emails look more real and real. But after a breach like this, phishing attacks usually spike. So be cautious of any emails, texts, or phone calls that ask for personal information. And if something feels off, trust your gut and double check before giving out any details. That's one thing I do, especially with emails. I do a lot of research on emails before I even respond. If it's a new person contacting me, remember legitimate companies will never ask for sensitive information over email or text. Now, lastly, if you're really concerned about your data being out there, consider opting out of data broker sites. These are companies that collect and sell your personal information, just like national public data. Now I'm still a little confused on how they got people's social security numbers because that shouldn't be in public databases anyway at least in my opinion unless it's like a government database but you can find services that will help you remove your information from these sites though some of them do charge a fee it's not a foolproof solution but it can reduce your exposure all right so my thoughts on this whole mess honestly I'm disappointed, but not surprised. We live in a world where data is the new currency and companies are collecting as much as they can. And the problem is many of them aren't taking the necessary steps to protect it. And when things go wrong, it's us, the consumers who end up paying the price. But what frustrates me the most is that this was avoidable. If companies like National Public Data had better security practices in place, like encrypting the data or even just not storing so much sensitive information all in one place, we wouldn't be in this situation. But here we are, and it's another reminder that we can't just rely on others to keep us safe. We have to be proactive. And this is also a good time to talk about the bigger picture. Data breaches like this one are becoming more common and they're not going away anytime soon. That's why it's so important to stay informed and take your own security seriously, whether it's learning how to use Linux, setting up better security on your accounts, or just being aware of what happens in the tech world. Knowledge is power. And that's one of the main reasons I started this channel, to empower people like you to take control of your tech life. It's easy to feel overwhelmed when you hear about breaches like this, but the more you know, the better equipped you are to handle it. And hey, if you've already followed the best practices like using strong passwords and two-factor authentication, give yourself some credit. You're already ahead of the game because I've ran into a lot of people that don't even know that this is an option for them. But if you're feeling a little behind, don't worry. There's no better time to start than right now. Take small steps and before you know it, you'll have a solid security foundation that can help protect you from whatever comes next because we all know something is coming next. But we're all in this together. And as long as we keep learning and adapting, we'll be all right. All right, so that's all I got for you today. I hope this video gives you some valuable insight and that you're feeling more prepared to deal with this fallout from this data breach. Remember, staying informed and proactive is the best way to protect yourself in this ever-changing tech landscape. And if you have any questions, concerns, or just want to share your thoughts, 
hit me up in the comments below. I love hearing from you all and your questions might help others too. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Keep It Techie for more content like this. I'm here to help you navigate the tech world, whether it's Linux, cybersecurity, or just keeping your data safe. Make sure you stay safe out there. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. And of course, keep it tech. Whenever I talk to people, whenever I mentor people uh, dealing with, you know, getting into tech, you gotta figure out what you like or what you're interested in. Cause yeah, a lot of people get into the, you know, tech field because you can make a good amount of money. The money is the motivator, but you also, in my opinion, in order for you to be happy, you gotta like what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And so like for me, a lot of times it doesn't feel like work, bro. Most times it really doesn't feel like work. It's, it's, yeah, I'm doing something fun. I'm doing something I love to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's what makes it, you know, great for me.